getting down to business. That's what this show is all about. But what we want to provide to you is the knowledge that you need so you know who we have working relationships with, who are our partners, who are the resources that are offered to you through and by the town of Brookhaven. We are joined today by someone who has accomplished goals and accomplished a lot of things that are become reality with many of us. The 50 and over crowd, the baby boomers. More and more people are starting new businesses. What's interesting is that more and more people are over 50 are falling into that baby boomer category to start new businesses. Why is that? Sometimes it's out of necessity, but to make it successful, it needs to be out of passion, the desire to achieve. That is what Tom is all about, that desire to achieve. So Tom, what drives you? What drive? Well, really, it's, uh, it is. It's purpose, it's passion, but it all has to do with health and fitness. Uh, knowing me, you know, it's, it's all about health, fitness, pushing yourself, always pushing yourself. And just because you're 50 or 40 or whatever or older, you know, our society today says that, well, you're in the later stages of your life. You know, you're on your way to retirement. You know, we're going to put you out to pasture. And I don't believe that's so. I would have to agree with you on that one. I like to Good. think we gain knowledge <laughs> as we move forward. Well, we Not do. Not the way around. We yeah. do. Absolutely. We do. You know, we should be. One of the key things to living a long, ageless lifestyle is learning. Always be learning. Always be learning. Reading, going to seminars, um, meeting great people, you know. So always be learning. Always be learning. Great idea. Well, now, where are you actually taking your business? What, what are you... You're, you're driven by passion, all right? but what is that passion doing for you? What are you trying to accomplish? You personally, what are you trying to accomplish? My big goal is, you know, I left a great career, okay, uh, because I thought I could be doing more. I mean, I had a great career as an airline captain, flying helicopters, you know, as a contract pilot and doing all kinds of great things with that. But I always thought deep down in my heart, you know, that I could be doing more, giving back. So my, my goal is to um, brand myself as this adventurer entrepreneur in the health and wellness industry, okay, with books, DVDs, seminars, coaching, uh, a juicing business, supplementation, but all based on health and wellness. You know, nothing, um, what do I want to say, um, where you have all these prepackaged foods and processed foods. I want to teach people to get away from that. So you're looking okay? to go more on the organic side? Organic, fresh, fresh natural. All right. How do we go, though? We were so commercial pilot. You had a good job. You left that to go follow right. your passion. So your passion now, how, how do we make that transition? What's driven you to do that? Um, well, like I said, um, I've always had a passion for adventure. And that kind of where, you know, that's where the, the flying jets and helicopters comes into play. But doing that for 20 years, I'm like, well, I should be doing more. But what I learned along the way was um, being, uh, I, I used to fly for DHL, Flying Knights, you know, they're similar to FedEx and UPS. And that type of lifestyle really wears on you. So what I did was I started doing a lot of research, right. you know, about a healthy lifestyle. So you added more of a physical component to it? So uh, well, I was always into bodybuilding, natural bodybuilding, and I became a personal trainer. And so, but in order for me to uh, be an airline captain, you have to maintain a physical, okay, a first class physical, going to the doctor twice a year, maintaining your medical. But also, I realized that flying nights is a real detriment to your body. So, I needed to exercise properly, um, proper nutrition along the way, proper rest. And having done that, I learned, wow, you know, I can share this information because other pilots were asking me, hey, what are you doing? You know, how come you're maintaining the, your weight and you're looking great and, you know, you're still you're flying nights and the rest of these guys look like death warmed over. You know, it's a tough job. Yeah, it's dinner a, at the wrong time of day. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, you'd land somewhere and you'd have breakfast, but it's, you know. Not the right breakfast. Right. So now the sure. exercise, I assume you were just a little bit more than just in good shape. Well, a little bit. I love, you know, growing up, my heroes were like Frank Zane and Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Jack LaLanne, and um, something about, 
you know, the physicality of it all just really drove me to become a natural bodybuilder. And I just loved it. You know, the ancient Greeks always said, you know, um, a perfect healthy body means a perfect healthy mind or vice versa. Right. And I learned that as I started to build my body, um, I became mentally stronger, so there, there was a connection there. Right. So. And those are what give you the credibility, the credentials in order to do. So with the bodybuilding, you've been in a few contests? Well, I, I started competing uh, in my early 20s and then got away from it as I got into the career thing, you know. And then um, when I was 45, I picked it up again and I did it for six years. And last year at the age of 52, I won a... Uh, natural universe contest in my class and it took me six years to do it you know nothing great comes in you know no it comes it doesn't come <clears throat> overnight for sure but um, in order to do what I'm doing now I figured out well you need some credentials okay right. so the bodybuilding was one thing but I really you know wanted to get away from that uh, so I went to culinary school to learn more about nutrition uh, I became a certified personal trainer and so then I started applying some of those things but always wanting to do adventure so then I started mountain climbing okay it, mountain climbing <laughs> when I, so what what is the definition of mountain climbing to you you're climbing well for me it's traveling the world you know keeping that adventure and uh, I started climbing the seven summits right and the seven summits that's the highest mountain on seven different continents correct and you're in the, the process highest peak. yes. the highest peaks okay and you're in the process of doing that right last year I did four of them Right. Okay, I did uh, Kilimanjaro in Africa. I went to Russia in the Caucasus Mountains and did uh, Mount Elbrus. I went to Australia and did Kosciuszko. And while I was down there, you know, I did uh, some shark diving with great whites. Of course. You know, just to kind of like add something to it a little uh, bit. It, it, not that it's <laughs> enough just to go climb a mountain. We've got to go down also. Uh, we'll well, the sharks. well, for sure, you know. And then recently, I just got back from Argentina, where uh, I climbed uh, Aconcagua. It's the highest peak in the world outside of the Himalayas. So it was just uh, a fantastic trip. So, so now you've, so you're a chef, pilot, mm -hmm. still a pilot, uh, the chef, then also the adventurer, and also a certified coach. Now, this is what you're trying to bring together Correct. and create into a business. Correct. Right, into a coaching business for the health, the exercise, the wellness aspect. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, for me, I, I don't want to have the typical job or a job. It's not really about having a job. It's about being passionate about what you're doing. And so can I monetize that? That's the business aspect of it. Can I monetize what I'm doing? You know, and it, it all goes back to your childhood. You know, what did I dream about? I dreamed about, you know, jets and helicopters and adventures and watching those TV shows, Jacques Cousteau. And, okay. you know, that's what really juiced me. And so now I'm like, you know, as I get older, sort of, you know. It's uh, just a number. It's okay. It's, well, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's just a number. You know, I want to make a career or a living out of what I love. So I'm in that process right now, sort of branding myself, taking all these passions. I love food and I love cooking and I love flying and adventure and working with people, coaching with people. So, so the monetization side of it. So we're looking at it from a coaching standpoint, one-on-one -on -one coaching, perhaps videos, DVDs, correct. online also. Correct. Right? correct. You're in the process of writing a book? Well, I finished writing it, the book. Ageless You, The Boomer's Guide to Beginning Again, that'll be out in about two weeks on Amazon, Lulu, my website. So from that book, you know, I, I created a, a five-step process, okay, to live a long, healthy, ageless lifestyle. From that book, we're creating, and I have a small team around me creating a coaching program, DVDs. Uh, we want to do seminars, live seminars. And whatever else I can garner from that, right. you know, that, that's just one portion of the business. Right. So now where do the ideas come from this? You, we know what your passion is. We know what you want to do. You know what you want to accomplish with your, from the passion side of it. You want to take that hobby, which just a hobby unless you start to monetize it, and turn it into a business. So that you've built a team around you in order to help you <clears throat> bring the whole thing together so you could start to bring it to the public? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't do anything by yourself, you know, whether you're flying, mountain climbing, starting a business, writing a book, 
you're not going to get anywhere. So I've uh, created this. I call it like a circle of genius. Okay. You know, people that help me write the book, people that help me market the book, people that are helping me create a business. You know, I don't know how to create a business, but I, I know about planning. You know, being an airline captain, you know, you can't go from the West Coast to the East Coast and just take off in any direction. You probably do know. <laughs> yeah, you would know. You do need to know which way to go. Uh, which way to go. Yeah. So, and you're always... As a pilot or whatever, even as an entrepreneur, you're always changing direction, always well, making corrections. That, hold, uh, that has to hold true when you're doing one of these climbs, especially oh, down when sure. you to uh, Concagua. For sure. The, the planning of the climb in and of itself, you went by yourself or is there a team that's with there you there? There was a team. There was a team. Uh, the planning took months. The training took months. And then the execution, okay? That took, it was uh, 22 days. So, and there was changes along the way once we started the climb. There was only, uh, we started out with uh, 12 climbers and um, six of us made it. To the, the other summit. six couldn't uh, make it for? Well, for various reasons. Uh, two became uh, sick with uh, cerebral, no, I'm uh, pulmonary edema. Um, one other gentleman just fatigue and another gentleman mentally fatigued. He just couldn't go on. And then when we were pushing for the summit, there was another gentleman that uh, was my tent mate, uh, mentally knew that he wasn't gonna reach the summit. Although we pushed for the summit on that final day from camp three to, to the summit, he mentally, I mean, he was telling me, you know, I'm not as strong as you guys, you know, you other guys, and uh, he didn't make it, you know. So that just tells me that, you know, what's up here Definitely affects That's what here. I was just thinking he defeated himself. He defeated himself. Oh yeah, long before, long before he started the climb. So now on the coaching, with that, if I were to come to you and, and hire you as a coach, if it I would don't cost think... you some big bucks too, by the way. <laughs> All right, I'll keep that in mind. Okay. <laughs> but if I were to come to you and hire you as a coach, we'll, sure. we'll have to work work on the rates <laughs> over here. If I would hire you as a coach, though, if I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve it, how much could you push me to actually achieve those goals? I'd say half, 50% of the way, you know. I mean, I can't force anybody to eat healthy, right, or to do the exercises. I can coach them and give them motivation. Right. The other 50% has to come from you. Right. You know? Now, it's, it's an important point that you brought up over there with the teamwork. And what we're going to do, we're going to come back in a few minutes, and we're going to explain to you the, the proper ways to use a team and the importance of the team. We are going to be joined by Ken Serini from Serini & Associates, who has started his own business after leaving a job working with one of the top four accounting firms. And Barbara Ransom, Barbara Ransom represents the Chambers of Commerce that are available to you in the town of Brookhaven. <laughs> 